time has come, I'm going to be opening up the uh, new 12,000 XP by EG4. Um, a whole home inverter for off-grid solutions, although you can be grid connected uh, as an input. It'll just never feed back to the grid. This is what I'm finding inside. Looks like a template, which will be great. Um, a mounting bracket and some big old bolts. By the way, this thing is really heavy. You're not going to pick it up by yourself. Um, but my wife helped me and we got it up on this table so far. Well, the first thing is to line up your uh, template with your studs and then mark spots right over the studs. Set the screw just a little bit in. So that I'm ready for the bracket. All right. There it is, it feels pretty solid. Should hold 105 pounds. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, lift. Come Whoa, this way. No way. Yay. What? <laughs> Look at it, it's beautiful. <laughs> awesome. So the next step is to put there's little brackets on the side, and there are two little holes right here on this side and two on the other side as well. So these little tiny screws are what need to be temporarily screwed on here. Working in a little bit of a tight space, but hopefully I'll get these in. That can slide against the wall. And now I'm going to want to put one of these lag bolts through here. Um, and I think I'm going to put mine here against the base. All right, I'm just going to screw it in. So these little tiny screws are eight millimeters. And I'm cinching them up so that they are just snug. All right, um, I've gotten the um, X, the 12,000 XP mounted to the wall. It's really solid uh, into the studs. And um, just thought I'd show you some of my components as I get ready to hook them up. I've got... Uh, 560 amp hour uh, worth of batteries and uh, connected in series on one side and on the other side and then connected in parallel together uh, to be able to keep it at a nominal 48 um, but to get over the 200 uh, amps or the 400 amps that this uh, device needs. Um, I've also strapped them together and to the wall so that they're not going to tip over in an earthquake. Uh, I've also got some um, breakers that I've installed for the photovoltaic uh, power coming in and uh, decided on putting a completely separate uh, sub panel. This was the original panel. Uh, had an electrician move all of those um, circuits over into a sub panel. So to access 
this, uh, the, the cable connections. Got to take off these little screws. Uh, they are Phillips. And once you get the screws out, this thing just lifts and pulls off. So here's where all the connectors uh, come in. You see the PV inputs, uh, and next to that is grid. And if you have a generator, you could put, uh, put that in. Uh, and then the outbound load, including something called smart load. Uh, and then for the battery comm, if you have a battery that works that way, and, and uh, if you're gonna daisy chain them, the parallel. Um, and then the, uh, the battery connections. So the uh, photovoltaic cables, uh, I've got two different arrays. I'm going to be hooking them into um, these inputs. But first of all, I need to strip the end of the wire. The stripping tool has been great. It just pops it off. And then you need to put a ferrule on um, the ends of these so that it um, can screw in nicely. Here's a ferrule. Um, for a 10 gauge, uh, which is what these cables are. So I just kind of screw that on and take, take the tool that it came with. Um, you, you just thread the ferrule through there and then cinch it up completely and what you have is uh, kind of a square um, piece and that's nice and tight and the wires are protected so I finished all my connections which you can see in here um, the PVs I've got two different arrays and put them in there uh, and the, uh, the, the the input from the grid is right there and uh, the output the EPS output to my panel for the home for the house is there uh, and then here's the batteries um, and I turned it back on uh, or I powered it up and uh, as you can see it's uh, all the lights came back on in the house that's all good news um, I ended up choosing to uh, move all of my home's circuits to a sub-panel and got that installed. So this main breaker is how I shut off the power from the grid. Uh, and then I've got a 100 amp uh, service breaker running uh, back in here to the grid input. Uh, and then from the grid, or sorry, from the inverter, I've got a 100 amp running back in and powering this, this panel. For the 12,000 XP, it will uh, uh, handle up to 100 amps of output, which is what my home's panel was originally. So um, I'm hoping everything will work well.